Roll out a piece of fabric along the wing, leaving enough at the wing root to cover the entire end and about a foot at the tip. Why so much at the tip? You'll see later. Cut another piece the same length. We're just about ready to attach the fabric to the wing. First, let's consider an issue that has to do strictly with the visual appeal of the finished product. Which side of the tri-pacer wing can best be seen when the plane is at rest? Unless you're very tall, you can see the bottom of the wing. Just as you can see the top of the lower wing on the new standard or the top of the tail surfaces and so forth. Once you've considered which side you can see, determine which side of the fabric to glue on first so that when you are completely finished installing the fabric, the final glued seam is on the side you don't see. Even if the final cemented seam isn't perfect, no one will notice. On the new standard lower wing, you would want to cover the bottom of the wing first so that the top piece of fabric is wrapped around and cemented to the bottom piece on the underneath side of the wing where you can't see the final glued seam. On the tripacer, you would cement the top piece of fabric on the wing first, so the bottom piece could wrap around and be glued to the top piece on the top portion of the wing, where you won't see the final cemented seam. You can use a tape measure to determine how far up on top the seam could be taken, given the 70 inch maximum width of the fabric. On the tripacer, the bottom piece of fabric can wrap all the way around the leading edge and be cut at the edge of the aluminum. This will put your final cemented seam out of view when the plane is on the ground. On tail surfaces, you would cover the bottom of the surface first so the top piece of fabric put on last will wrap around and be cemented to the bottom piece on the underneath side where you can't see the final seam. Again, this is a purely cosmetic consideration, but it is good to be thinking from the start about ways to make the finished piece not only technically correct, but also visually attractive. Back to the tri-pacer wing. When applying the first piece of fabric, you must cement a two inch wide area of fabric to the leading edge. That's one of the rules. Where the two inch wide area of glued fabric is located is up to you. The only requirement is that the second piece of fabric you install reach far enough around the leading edge so that you can cement it to the first piece with a two inch overlap. The fabric must be cemented to the structure around the rest of the perimeter with at least a one inch wide area of glue. There is an excellent section in the polyfiber manual on pages 17 through 24 on fabric cementing. On the tri-pacer, we will make the cemented seams in the center line area of the leading edge as described in the manual. Get out your chalk line and snap a line along the center of the leading edge. Then measure one inch above the center line and one inch below the center line and snap parallel lines at those marks. Regular blue carpenter's chalk lines will disappear later and won't bleed through the final coatings. These chalk lines will be your guidelines. We'll use them later when cutting and cementing the leading edge. Position the wing top side up and place the fabric on the wing. You will now need lots of clothespins and spring clamps to clamp the fabric in place. Be sure the fabric rests smoothly on the surface and is clamped in place exactly in the position it will be cemented. You will usually have to reposition the clamps at least once before you are ready to cement. Keep at it until the fabric rests smoothly on the surface. Ordinarily, you can use clamps and clothespins to secure the tip, wing root, and trailing edge in place as you see here on the new standard. Be sure the fabric is clamped smoothly and tightly along the trailing edge. Don't let it get bunched up like this. If it is smooth and straight along the trailing edge, you will avoid having wrinkles due to excess fabric when you turn the wing over and cement the fabric to the trailing edge. The tripacer with its full length aileron well can be clamped only at the tip and wing root. Do the best you can. Never, ever start to cut or glue until the fabric is clamped in position. This is true when you are covering any structure. Notice how on this tripacer fuselage, the fabric was clamped into position first before any cuts were made. How tightly should the fabric be cemented? One guideline is that once you have finished cementing, the fabric should look as it did before you started cementing, resting smoothly on the surface. This is the way it is already clamped, so do not pull and tug on the fabric as you are cementing. It doesn't really matter where you start cementing, whatever seems most practical to you but always save the wingtip bow for last. On the tripacer wing, we are going to cement the area around the aileron well first 
because it can't be clamped into position due to the shape of the well. May as well cement it into position before we tackle the leading edge. Remember, you need at least one inch of fabric cemented to the structure of the wing everywhere except the leading edge where you must have a two inch wide cemented area. Adhering to this rule, the fabric will be cemented into the aileron well at least one inch. More is okay, but not necessary. Draw a line on the fabric so that at least one inch extends into the aileron well. Use only a number two pencil to mark the fabric. Anything else may bleed through to the final finish. Cut on the line and cement the fabric into the well. The procedure for cementing with polytack is to apply a wet bed of cement to the surface and press the fabric into the wet polytack. Do not go over the top of the fabric with more polytack. You want the solvents to evaporate out through the fabric. Remember, the procedure is to put a wet bed of polytack on the surface and press the fabric into the wet bed. Work with no more than a 12 inch stripe of cement at a time. You will usually use a squeegee to remove the excess cement so there are no lumps in the cemented seams. The squeegee is a little hard to use in the aileron well though, so use your fingers to press the fabric firmly in place. We will finish off the inside of the aileron well later when the pinked edge finishing tapes are applied. At the tip area of the aileron well and most anywhere else where there is a 90 degree corner, draw a line at a 45 degree angle into the corner. You can also punch a little hole with your pencil at the corner to give you a guide for how far in to cut. Cut the fabric into the corner, then trace the triangular shape of the tip onto the flap of fabric.
towards your hand. Always iron perpendicular to the tip bow. Don't ever pull sideways. Always straight. Pull and iron towards your hand. Do a little at a time and keep at it until the fabric lies flat on the tip bow. Never mind how wrinkled it is past the area you will cement. Once it lies flat, cement the fabric to the bow. Cut off the excess and again, start cementing in the center of the area being attached. Put down a wet bed of polytac under the fabric, press the fabric into the polytac and use your hand to squeegee out the excess. Notice how this spot looks dry. There is not enough polytac under the fabric here. When you notice small spots like this, it is okay to rub some polytac through the fabric to wet the area. It should not occur very often if you are careful to put a very wet bed down before the fabric is pressed into the polytac. Carefully trim with a razor blade or scissors. This extra piece of fabric at the tip is in the way, which brings up a saying you might want to remember. If you don't like it, cut it off. Don't be afraid to cut off pieces that look like they just don't belong. Use common sense during fabric covering. Generally, if it seems right to you, it probably is. Before cementing fabric to the bottom of the wing, there is some cleanup and ironing to do. In a moment, we are going to cement another piece of fabric on top of the one we've just finished installing. Right now, if you could run your fingers over the cemented areas, you'd feel some roughness from the polytac that seeped through the fabric. Also, you'd feel some small wrinkles that occur during fabric installation. Remember, if you can feel it, you'll see it in the end. You must clean up the polytac and iron out any wrinkles in the cemented areas before installing the second piece of fabric. Remove the polytac with a clean rag and MEK. Be sure not to scrub the seams. That will fuzz up the edge. Always rub in the direction that causes the fibers to lie down in the seam edge. Now, smooth out any wrinkled areas with the iron set at 250. If you have a wrinkle that just won't go away at that temperature, you may turn the iron up, but be very careful. Too much heat could release the cement bond and ruin your day. The objective here is to clean up and smooth out all areas where you will be cementing the second piece of fabric onto the first. Now it's time to cement the second piece of fabric to our wing. Position the wing so the covered side is up. Iron out any additional wrinkles you see in the area where the second piece of fabric will be cemented. Never cement over wrinkles. Now we need to snap some more blue chalk lines. At the trailing edge, as would be done on the new standard wing, snap a line one inch inboard of the edge. This will give you a guideline when cementing the second piece of fabric. On the leading edge, snap a line two inches past the edge of our first piece of fabric. Again, this provides a guideline to which you will glue the next piece of fabric. Now for the bottom piece. Turn the wing over and clamp the fabric in place as before. Again, be sure it rests smoothly on the surface. Before cementing, remember to protect your hands, either with gloves or with invisible gloves cream. As before, on the tripacer, we will start cementing at the aileron well. We're starting here because we can't clamp the fabric into position due to the shape of the well, so we just have to cement it into position. Cut into the corners at a 45 degree angle. Make the pencil line, coat with polytac, cut and cement a flap at the tip area. Lay the fabric into the well. Mark where you will cut at least one inch into the well. Use the polytac so the cut won't fray. Cut and cement into the well. Notice that here the fabric is cut so that it covers the entire aileron well. This is fine, but be careful never to iron this area. If you do, the fabric can pull out of the well and chafe the aileron. Remember, don't pull and tug as you cement. Gently press the fabric into the wet bed of polytac. Cover the butt rib just as was done with the first piece of fabric. We're now ready to turn the wing over and cement the leading edge. Before doing that, spot weld the fabric in position just as you did before using little dabs of polytac and the squeegee. Turn the wing over. Notice that through the second piece of fabric you can see the blue chalk lines previously snapped on the wing at the trailing edge of the new standard or the leading edge of the tripacer. 
Snap another set of lines on the second piece of fabric that correspond to those already on the first piece of fabric, both leading and trailing edges. You'll see why shortly. Coat the chalk lines you just snapped with a little bit of polytac so they won't fray. Let that dry and then carefully cut both leading and trailing edge seams. Don't take off all the clothespins along the trailing edge as you're cutting or the fabric will fall out of position. Be very careful to make neat, straight cuts. If you do or don't, it will show in the end. As before, where the leading edge material transitions into the tip bow, vertically cut down the edge of the leading edge material to the center line. Be sure to coat that line with polypack before cutting it so it won't fray. Now listen carefully. This is important to the overall look of your finished surface. You have a blue chalk line on the leading and trailing edges. You have a corresponding blue chalk line you have just cut on the second piece of fabric that is about to be cemented to the first. These two lines should meet when you cement the seams, no matter what. If you make these two lines meet, you will have perfectly straight seams. Again, it doesn't really matter whether you cement the leading or trailing edge first, whatever makes sense to you in order to keep the fabric in position. Cement the fabric to the leading edge with a two inch wide glue area. Start in the middle and, using the squeegee, work your way to each end using a slight sideways motion as you squeegee. Be sure to make the cut edge of the fabric to the blue line on the surface. Let's move to the new standard and cement the trailing edge. As always, start in the middle and squeegee using a slight sideways motion as you go along in either direction. Remember to make the blue lines meet. Don't pull and tug the fabric out of position. Gently press it into the polytech. Keep the edge of the seam right on the blue line already snapped on the wing. This way, you will achieve a perfectly straight seam. Last thing to do, the wing tip. Here is a good example of how sometimes things get stuck down where they shouldn't be, like this area at the tip. You can break this loose with your fingers so it doesn't deform this area when you shrink the fabric later. Heat form the tip just like you did before. Pull and iron towards your hand. Pull and iron towards your hand. Keep going until there is an inch of fabric resting flat around the tip. Using your pencil and a ruler, carefully draw a line one inch in from the tip bow radius. As you know, Ordinarily, you would coat the line with polytac before cutting to avoid frayed edges. Let's not and see what happens. Cut the seam and cement. See how the cut edge tends to fray if it's not coated with polytac first. Now you have successfully covered the entire wing.